My name is Tom Wolf. I'm the product application engineer for logic devices here at NXP Semiconductor. Today, we're going to look at load switches. Have you ever been driving down the highway and seen a sign on the back of a truck that says wide load ahead? From now on, we want you to think of that in a whole new way because there are a wide range of applications for load switches ahead. So today, we're going to look at the lowly load switch. What is a switch? Isn't it just a FET? Some advanced functionality, and then importantly, NXP's product offerings. So what is an integrated load switch? A load switch is a way for a low power electronic device to turn on a high current device. A way for a microcontroller to switch on a big motor, or to switch on a light bulb, or something which consumes current. Now the traditional way of doing this is by using a number of FETs as shown as the diagram here. So if you take a couple FETs, a couple resistors, a capacitor or two, hook them up the right way, you have built a load switch. Now that requires a little bit of work and a little bit of tuning. The advantage then of an integrated load switch is all the work is done for you. All of the components have been put together and have been tuned and built to make the design much easier to implement. However, an integrated load switch is more than just a replacement for a handful of discrete devices. It can add considerable functionality. So a load switch is more than just a handful of FETs and components. What you can do is add functionality which could not possibly be done or would be very difficult to do with discrete components. This diagram shows you the ultimate device. It has all of the features which might be found on a load switch. Let's look at them one piece at a time. The first part to consider is the device found inside the drive logic, which is called the slew rate control. Slew rate control means that instead of the switch turning on instantly, it gently turns on or gently turns off. Now this is really useful because you don't get something called an inrush of current. It makes it, puts less stress onto the switch itself and less stress on the circuit around it. So this is a feature which can be added to an integrated load switch, but would be rather difficult to build yourself from discrete components. Another feature which you might find on a highly integrated load switch would be the charge pump. A charge pump is a device that takes a low voltage and steps it up to a higher voltage. FETs are very sensitive to how they operate at low voltage. When you get to a certain point, a certain low voltage, they're just not very reliable. Sometimes they turn on, sometimes they don't. If you can push that voltage up, they operate more reliably. Hence the reason for a charge pump. So a charge pump is a device which can be found inside an integrated load switch, but won't be very difficult to put into a discrete assembly. Another feature is the discharge circuit. When you turn off the load switch, it takes a long time for that capacitance to go away. Sometimes you don't want that to happen. You want, when you turn the switch off, you want the voltage to go to zero on the output. This is where a discharge circuit works. When the switch turns off, a special circuit turns on to discharge the load. So you get a very nice, neat, clean off on the output of a signal. Another feature is thermal shutdown. What happens if the device gets too warm? You want to have some sort of control on board that sets a maximum operating temperature. If the temperature of the device goes beyond that point, it automatically and safely shuts down. Another feature, reverse voltage protection. You've seen it before on a toy or an appliance. You put the battery in backwards. Sometimes it may not hurt the device. Sometimes you may physically destroy the device by putting that battery in backwards. A reverse voltage protection can actually sense the battery's been put in backwards, open the switch, disconnect it, and shut down safely. So it's an added feature that a load switch can provide. UVLO or under voltage lockout. Again, at very low voltages, load switches and FETs don't operate exactly as planned. By putting a UVLO circuit on board, the device can be made to shut down very reliably and securely if the voltage goes too low. Suppose you try to plug in too big of an appliance or a device into that USB port on the side of your laptop. If it draws too much current, it could damage the laptop itself. A load switch with a current limit on it would automatically disconnect, sort of like a circuit breaker or a fuse, if too big of a device is plugged in. And finally, a fault pin. Any of the conditions we've just talked about, reverse voltage, under voltage, thermal, um, over current, any of those not only might cause the load switch to turn off safely, a fault pin would also send a signal to the microprocessor, possibly with information that says, hey, something went wrong, 
I just shut down. This is the reason I shut down. What would you like to do about it? So those are some of the features that you'll find in integrated load switches. Let's look very briefly at some of the offerings from NXP at this time. This chart shows some of the devices which we build today. Without going into details, because you can find those on our website, you will find that we have a selection of the different features built on the board. Some of these devices will have under voltage lockout, some will have overcurrent protection, some will have reverse voltage on them. The issue then is to look at your application, determine the features that you need, and based on that, select the right load switch. Where load switch is found? In a wide variety of places. The main reason for load switches is to turn off parts of a circuit which are not needed. Today's modern mobile phones, laptops, and consumer products would not have the lifetime on the battery that we currently enjoy if it were not for load switches. A load switch allows you to turn off the part that you don't need at that time. If your cell phone doesn't need Wi-Fi, switch it off. If it's dark and you don't need as much backlight, use a load switch to turn off some of the LEDs. Modern devices may have dozens or hundreds of load switches on board to very minutely control the current consumption of the device and lengthen your battery life. Look at the application that you have, look at the features that you need, and this will help you select the appropriate NXP load switch. For more information on load switches, go to www.nxp.com.